In this video, we'll be covering a topic called simple linear regression. Here's the big idea. Simple linear regression is a method that we can use to quantify the relationship between two variables. So using simple linear regression, we can find the equation of a line that best fits our data. This line is known as the least squares regression line. So if we imagine that we have a scatter plot here with one variable along the x-axis and another variable along the y-axis. The least squares regression line is the line that best fits the data or kind of best captures the trend going on with this data. So to understand how this line is actually calculated, we need to understand what's known as the method of least squares. So this is the method that we use to find the line that best fits our data set. And here's the idea behind it. If we have this scatter plot here with 10 observations and we put some line in here to kind of capture the trend of our scatter plot, we can calculate the distance from each observation to the line. And that distance is known as a residual. So for each observation, we can calculate the residual of that particular observation or the distance that each observation is from the line. And our goal with linear regression is to find the line that minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. So to understand this idea, let's look at an example. So suppose we have this scatter plot of 10 points. For each, uh, for each point, we can calculate the residual. So let's say that we put a line right here to capture this trend that's kind of going on in our scatter plot. If we then calculate the residual of each observation, so we can find the distance from each observation to the line. So let's suppose we do that for this first one and we find that the residual is four. And then we can do that for the next observation as well. Let's say we calculate the distance from this observation to the line and find that it's four units. And then we can do it for the next observation as well. This one's a little closer. So let's say this residual is three units. And then we do it for the next one. And we find that this distance, it's a little bit longer. So it's six units away from the line. And we calculate this residual for every single observation in our data set. And then what we want to do is we take the square of each residual and then we take the sum of all the squared residuals. So for example, we take four squared plus four squared plus three squared plus six squared plus four squared plus three squared plus eight squared plus five squared plus seven squared plus two squared. And when we take the sum of all those numbers, we get 244. Now, let's say we have this exact same data set right here in this scatter plot, and we try to put a line over here and to see how well that this fits the data set. Well, once again, if we calculate the residual of each observation or the distance that it lies from this line, we can find that maybe this first one is four, maybe this next one is also four, this distance is nine, this one is three, this distance is nine. So we calculate the residual for every single observation again. And once again, if we square all of them and then take the sum, we'll find that it's equal to four squared plus four squared, plus nine squared, plus three squared, plus nine squared, plus six squared, plus 13 squared, plus three squared, plus <clears throat> one squared, plus nine squared. And we find that that is equal to 515. And then let's say we do it one more time. We have the exact same scatter plot and we try some other line. We just put a line right here. And then we once again calculate all of the squared residuals and take the sum. And we find that it's 373. Well, out of all three of these lines, the one that best fits the data is the one that minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. So in this case, it would be this first line right here because the sum of the squared residuals is 244. So this would be known as the line of best fit. And if we imagine, we could put an infinite number of lines through this data set in a bunch of different varieties of way. These are only three top possible lines that we could use. But if we imagine there's an infinite number of lines that we could use, we find that this one is the one that minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. So this is the line of best fit. So that's what simple linear regression is doing behind the scenes. Um, now let's, let's look at uh, how to interpret regression output. So you likely will never have to perform simple linear regression by hand, but you will have to do it with some software like Excel or maybe with a TI-84 calculator or some other statistical software. So Although you won't have to do it by hand, it's important to know how to interpret the output of simple linear regression. So for example, let's say we have this data set here that shows the number of hours that a student studied for an exam along with the score that they received on that exam. 
Now, when we perform simple linear regression, so when we plug this data set into, say, Excel or TI 84 calculator or something like that, there are going to be three main portions of the output uh, that you should know how to interpret. The first is what's called the model summary. So this is a linear, a summary of the linear regression model. The first metric that you should be aware of is what's called R square. So R square is the proportion of variance in the response variable that can be explained by the predictor variable. So for example, in this case, our response variable would be score and the predictor variable, the variable that we're using to try to predict score would be hours. So in this case, this says that 78.7% .7 of the variance and score can be explained by the number of hours that a student studied. So the higher this R squared value, the stronger the relationship between the predictor value, excuse me, the predictor variable and the response variable. And R squared always ranges from zero to one. So the closer the R squared is to one, the stronger the relationship between the predictor variable and the response variable. Another metric that you should be aware of is called the standard error. This is the average error between the regression line and individual observations. So for example, the average distance between the regression line and an individual observation for this data set might be 5.13. The lower this number, the more closely the regression line is to the individual observations. So the lower, the better. Another important uh, output that you should know about regression is what's called the coefficients. So whenever you perform simple linear regression, you'll receive a little table that looks like this. The first column will show the constant along with the predictor variable. So the first thing that you'll see with each of these is what's called the coefficient. So this is, for example, the constant. This represents the average value of the response variable when the predictor variable is zero. So in this case, the average value of exam score when hours is equal to zero is 63.62. Now, for hours, this coefficient is the average increase in the response variable associated with a one unit increase in the predictor variable. So for example, for each additional hour that a student studies, their exam score is expected to rise by 5.07 points. Now, the standard error of the coefficient is just a measure of the uncertainty around this coefficient estimate. So for example, the standard error of the coefficient for hours is 0.73. And then the t test statistic is the coefficient divided by the standard error of the coefficient. So for example, for hours, we have 5.07 divided by 0.73 gets 6.94. So this is known as the t-test statistic. And then lastly, the p-value is the p-value associated with this test statistic, t. So in most cases, we will say that if a p-value is less than some threshold, for example, 0 0.05, that there's a statistically significant association between this predictor variable hours and the response variable score. So for example, in this case, 0 0.000, this is less than 0 0.05. So we would say that hours has a statistically significant association with score. So the number of hours that a student studies has a, has a uh, statistically significant association with the score that they receive on an exam. And lastly, using these coefficient values right here, you can form the estimated regression model or the line of best fit. So for example, in this case, it would be score is equal to the constant coefficient for constant, so 63.62, plus the coefficient for the predictor variable hours, 5.07 times hours. So for example, we can use this estimated regression model to make predictions. So let's say a student named Lucy studies for three hours. Her expected exam score would be calculated as score equals 63.62 plus 5.07 times the number of hours that she studied, three, equals 78.83. So her expected exam score is a 78.83, which we calculated using her hours.